It's time for one of our regular segments here on ADC Live, the State Update. We're joined again by Michael Bem from Stateside Associates. This week he's focusing on education legislation in Alabama, where he sat down with Trent Edwards from the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce. Thanks, Matt. States around the country are competing for the title of the most military-friendly state. State leaders understand how important a military presence is to both national security and their own local economy. They've been enacting laws over the last two decades to protect the bases, improve the schools, create employment opportunities, and improve the lives of the families that live around the bases. They're also doing this to be competitive, and more competitive in this environment, to secure that new base or mission, land that new weapon system, grow the current mission, and bring in the quality families and veterans to form the foundation of a solid community. You know, we're honored today to have as our guest, General Trent Edwards, Senior Vice President for Military and Community Development for the Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce in Alabama, which is home to Maxwell Air Force Base, Fort Rucker and Redstone Arsenal. General Edwards also sits on the Alabama Military Stability Commission, which has been busy this year working to pass state legislation geared toward protecting the bases from encroachment and supporting military children and families to make Alabama more competitive. General, welcome to ADC Live. Thanks for being on today. Michael, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and appreciate all the things that ADC is doing to uh, take care of our military members and families. General, tell us a little bit more about this legislative package, which is on its way to the governor. Eight bills uh, they passed this year, a big effort during any legislative session. How did you work with the legislature to do this? Absolutely. Thank you, Michael, for the question. I, I would start by telling you this was a team effort, right? We have someone on our uh, Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce team that works uh, external affairs, Ms. Sharon Rose. And so it was understanding, one, the legislative process, and two, the opportunity to engage on some issues that are very important to our military members and families. So we spent a lot of time uh, helping the legislature understand the importance of those bills and what it could do to help support our military members and our military spouses, as well as some of our military missions. So it was a team effort. So, so, so tell us um, uh, at least a couple of the bills address K through 12 schools and improving the quality. And this is now a basing criteria. Military communities are going to be judged on the quality of the schools. Tell us a little bit about that legislation. If you, can. you bet. Uh, there are a couple things in that legislation that um, that help address not only the mission, but also uh, to help advance uh, the quality of our public school education. Uh, one of the things we want to do is look at uh, in-state tuition. Uh, so if you are a military member and you're assigned to the state of Alabama for a short period of time and your, your, your child enters the Alabama higher education system, um, if you depart, as long as your child remains enrolled in that uh, college or university, you can, they can continue to pay uh, tuition at the in-state tuition rate. So we're very excited about that. Troops to Teachers is another legislation that also helps uh, retiring or departing military members engage in the education system in terms of uh, certifications and credentialing. Now, to really get to your question, the K through 12 piece. What we did was we established a K through 12 working group with um, Air University and Maxwell Air Force Base. And we invited community partners and leaders across seven counties to participate in how we can improve uh, quality public education. And it's just making folks aware of some of those issues. Well, that's, you know, that's great. Did you borrow from any other states or any other uh, uh, experiences to, to, to bring up that issue with the legislature? I think what we did, uh, Michael, was we listened to our military members and, and families. And so we've got great private schools and we have magnet schools. And so we are continuing to enhance the quality of public school education. So from a readiness perspective, when we looked at those barriers uh, that caused military members and families to maybe not relocate here, we understood that uh, public education was one of those barriers. So it was an all out effort to address the quality of public education, which by the way, Michael, not only benefits our military members and families, right? Education is a, a, a community-wide issue. We all benefit from quality public education. 
And, and, and General, you're retired Air Force. Um, I, I think our uh, viewers would be interested in uh, the legislation that was passed intended to ensure that tall structure development doesn't interfere with the air bases. Um, I'm thinking about wind turbine development, which is big right now as, as, as renewable uh, energy development is growing. Um, what are the challenges here? What are the challenges working with developers uh, to ensure they're not conflicting with the air mission? Sure, I think Michael, it was just helping developers understand the impact of tall structures to flying missions, such as the one we have at Maxwell with the 908 airlift wing. And so the legislation simply allows that before any uh, tall structures are constructed within two miles of the military installation, the military installation commander, that, that installation commander uh, in that base have the opportunity to take a look at where that structure is being built and to comment if it will interfere with flying or other operations. Well, General, thank you. I think we've run out of time today, but this has been a great conversation. Uh, to ADC Live viewers, uh, to learn more about Alabama's efforts, uh, you can visit the ADC Live website. And stay tuned for our next episode of State Updates, when we'll dive into the comprehensive work that's being done by the state of Utah to support their defense sector. Matt, back to you in the ADC Live studio. And thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Uh, you know, one of the things that General Edwards and I had a chance to talk about, in addition to the great things he just uh, spoke with Michael about, is one of their educational initiatives there on the ground in Montgomery. Recently adopted in Alabama and around the country is a new the Purple, Schools, the Purple Star Schools program. This supports military connected children as they relocate to new schools due to a parent's change of duty station or other moves. The Military Child Education Coalition has been the chief advocate of this program. And really to learn more about it, we wanted to go ahead and check in with CEO Dr. Becky Porter for background on these efforts and really how all of you can take advantage of it as well. Let's go, let's go there live now. The Purple Star Schools Initiative is something that's, uh, that, that schools and states voluntarily get involved with uh, to communicate to military parents that they are receptive to military connected students coming into their school system and that they have a culture of acceptance at those schools. MSEC is the national advocate for the Purple Star School Initiative. And we've worked um, in the last couple of years to help teach schools how to be involved with this and how they can um, adopt this as a, as a best practice. And what does a school or a, or a state or a school district need to do to become certified as a Purple Star School? It varies across the states um, what they require or what the school district requires. But generally speaking, it includes things like having a peer sponsorship program where students welcome new students into their school. And ideally, those that can include uh, both military and civilian students so that they get to know each other. Another thing that is frequently included in the Purple Star School um, requirements would be something like a, an on-campus liaison for military parents and military students. Uh, so this is someone who is different from a school liaison officer, but is there at the school to, um, to welcome military connected students and make sure that they get uh, oriented um, as seamlessly as possible. Another one of the uh, requirements that we see across uh, lots of the states includes professional development or in-service training for the, for the uh, school teachers and uh, counselors to, um, so that they know what it means to be a military connected student. And then um, finally, we often see that there's a requirement for the school to have a, a website uh, or space on their website for military connected parents. Uh, to, to get oriented to the school.